All right, in this one, we are going to focus on how to write a summary and analyze details and how to meet standard in this assignment. Um, so here's the requirements. Summary, as always, needs to make sense to me because I haven't read your book. You need to pick two details that seem like they didn't matter at first when you read the text, but they ended up being important. Now, the key is don't pick two details that didn't seem important at first and then ended up not being important. Pick two, two details that at first you just would have glossed over them. Maybe you got to go back and skim back through your book a little bit. Or maybe you got to do a little bit of thinking about what happened in your text. Two details in the text that didn't seem important, but then after you read for a while, you're like, oh, okay, I get why the author was including that information. You need to use text evidence and blend it with your words, or you identify two places in the text where the author describes something in an interesting, unique, or over-the-top sort of way. And what we're thinking about is word choice in that one. Thinking about how authors intentionally choose the words that they use in order to give some sort of effect in the story, which is going to lead you to doing this. You're going to write an alternate way the author could have described that exact same thing. Because when all of us choose words, we choose words very specifically to mean a certain thing, even though there's different ways of saying the same idea. We choose our words intentionally so that there's something beyond just literally what we're saying when we use our words. You need to then explain why you think the author chose to use that description and how it affects the way the reader thinks about the text. So for this summary, I'll just read it as an example of a good summary, but we've spent a lot of time looking at summaries through the series of videos, so I'm going to go pretty quick on it. It says, in pages 69 through 92, Bach, a half-husky dog, is a leader of a dog sledding team. The team gets a new human named Hal who controls the dogs. He whips them and is really mean to them. Half the way through their trip, about 30 miles in, the dogs take off running, being fed up from being abused, leaving Hal with no control. He falls off the, the sled, and the dogs come unhooked, running wherever they want. Bystanders got the dogs and told Hal what he was doing was wrong. Half-heartedly, he took their advice. He made the sled a lot lighter than it was, so the dogs wouldn't be exhausted. He also got six more dogs to add the team. This made the team have 12 dogs altogether, a much easier trip for the dogs. Hal didn't know how to work the sled dogs, so he never worked them with little to no sleep and he underfed them slowly, the dogs started to die. So we're starting with these unnecessary details. Picking two details that seem like they didn't matter at first when you read the text, but ended up being important. So, seemingly unnecessary detail says, right, using text evidence blended with your words, explain one detail that showed up in the text that seemed unnecessary at first. And I'll make that bold just so it's a little easier to see said, Buck saw a woman, Mercedes, the men called her. She was the wife of Hal, and she packed far more than the dogs could carry. So that's a detail that I thought, like, why would you add that detail? Who cares about this Mercedes lady or how much she packed in the sled? And the question I'm asking you to write about is, why did that detail end up being important in the text? And here's the person's response. They said, this ended up being important since Mercedes stopped Hal from whipping Buck and his sled members. Mercedes cares for the dogs and their happiness, making all the dogs like her. So they're explaining that detail of why they, I suppose, the detail was that they introduced Mercedes, and then why does Mercedes matter? Well, because she came into play later on in the story. So seemingly unnecessary detail number two. It says, using text evidence, blend it with your words, explain one detail that didn't seem important at first. And they said, Hal's whip fell upon the dogs. The dogs took off running in fear and pain. And so what, after they wrote that, they're trying to figure out why is that detail important in the text. And so what they said is that the dogs, furious from the whipping, halfway through the trip, they took off in a full sprint, even when Hal told them, whoa, he had no control over their speed. So in this case, why were they talking about like Hal's whip falling on the dogs? Why is that important? Well, because it led to the dogs like rebelling against Hal later on. So that seems like an important detail. Now we're starting to think about word choice. In this next section, you're thinking about the way an author chose to write something. As writing is a choice and speaking is a choice in terms of the way we speak to each other, the way we write to each other. We choose words specifically to try to get people to think and feel certain specific ways even though there's many ways to communicate the same idea. So word choice number one, it says, using text evidence blended with your words. Explain at least one part of the story where the author used interesting, unique, or over-the-top sorts of words to describe something in the text. 
And here's what they wrote. They said, Hal was younger, about 19 or 20, and here's where the author's words start. With a big Colt's revolver and a hunting knife strapped about him on a belt that fairly bristled with cartridges. This belt was the most noble thing about him. It advertised his cowardness. So, right here, that's the purple. Text evidence blended with your words for an interesting description. And here's what I mean by interesting description. When they answer the question, how else could the author have written that description? So they said, how else could the author have written the description? They could have just said, his name is Hal, he's 19. Like they could have done that, that would have communicated kind of the same idea. But the author chose to include that extra kind of unique description. So then the question becomes, why? Well, why would they choose that unique description? How does it affect the way the reader understands the text? And this person wrote, I think the author chose these words because it really gave you a picture of Hal, and it showed that he may be scary since he has a knife. Also, he was the newsletter, so he controlled the dogs and often whipped them and mistreated them. So in this case, they talked about why would the author choose those words to describe Hal compared to what they could have done. Let's take a look at another example. It says, using text evidence blended with your words. Explain at least one part of the story where the author used an interesting, unique, or over-the-top sorts of words to describe something in the text. And so in this case, they wrote, Hal was underfeeding the dogs. He kept cutting down to mostly the food they got. And then here's from the text, Mercedes stole from the fish sacks and fed them slyly so they could just get a little food. So right there, that's the interesting or unique sort of way they could have written that. The author wrote that. So it says, how else could the author have written that description? <clears throat> they could have just written, the dogs were tired and hungry. Yes, they could have. But why do you think then they chose to write it the way they did? And the answer is, according to this person, they said they chose to do that. they chose to show how abused the dogs were. They had to get snuck food just to eat. They were so tired that they picked sleep over food. This is unheard of with dogs. So the author chose those words intentionally to make sure the reader understood something on a deeper level, that we knew how abused those dogs were. This assignment meets standards, and that's how they did it.